mmoja kaasoba akakula peke yake sisi hatuna imani na yeye kwa kitu tunataka a step aside ama si hivyo tumtoe na tumweke adabu kina ubaga wameonyesha sisi tukifanya budget kuna uwezekano ile kitu tunaweka kwa budget sio hiyo wanalipa wanalipa mambo zingine it must be very clear from the onset that it is the process that was taken to court not that the budget was wrong for a long time kiambu has been a one man show where we have very qualified people at the helm of those directorates and ministries but the governor runs kiambu county as a kiosk All right, unfortunately, we don't have uh, the audio of uh, the deputy governor, but he is here in studio to speak for himself. You're watching Debrek, and welcome to the one-on-one -on -one interview with the deputy governor of Kiambu, James Nyoro. Thank you, Sam. Thank Good morning. You Thank you for inviting. Great. And uh, I want us to begin from that, uh, what the Kenyans in Kiambu are saying, that uh, Kasoba, the governor, alifanya huo mpango na kakula peke yake. Uh, an MCA there says that akuna uh, uzekano kitu inawekwa kwa budget, siyo hiyo inakuwa reflected. And uh, someone else saying, saying that uh, the governor has been running the county as a one-man show. Do you associate with these views? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for having me once again. Uh, I think Sam... Uh, Kenyans sometimes are of very short memory mm -hmm. uh, because if you look back uh, over the whole of last year, I personally was coming out very clearly on a number of occasions uh, where I was saying that the management of Kiambu County is such that is a one-man show. Uh, if you go to YouTube, uh, you will find, and Google Nyoro, mm -hmm. you will find and in a number of occasions, I said three things. I said it's a one-man show. Mm -hmm. I said that the, there are no cabinet meetings that are held. They are very, very, very few. Uh, we know that even at the country level, we have weekly cabinet meetings, sessions. Even if you have monthly uh, cabinet sessions, you can still run the county. I said very clearly that there are very few cabinet uh, sessions that were held. Mm -hmm. And if when they were held, I was not invited. Mm -hmm. And I also said that I was very concerned that uh, the members of the county assembly uh, instead of providing oversight to the executive, had actually become part of the executive. I said those things. And there is nothing new. I only stopped in August of 2018 uh, because I felt that you cannot continue to hammer one point day in, day out. You look like a fool. Mm -hmm. I stopped. And see, see what has happened less than nine months after that. So what is coming out is a clear manifestation of what has been happening in Kiambu right. over the last two years. Okay, we'll come back to that, why you're saying that you've been sidelined. But first of all, the new question, the questions that we now have, if we have the graphics that indicate uh, the expenditure that we hear of uh, in Kiambu County, of course, indicating that uh, some money has been being spent for national functions, including uh, state house votes. We'll be looking at those graphics later on in, in, a, in a few minutes. But before we do that, what is the possibility of uh, money being utilized to finance national functions at the county level? Well, first of all, uh, uh, there is no county that is supposed to finance mm -hmm. uh, national activities. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, if you read uh, the PFM Act, uh, if, you, if, you, if you see what happens from the control of budget, there is no uh, situation at all, irrespective of where the Kiambu is, where mm -hmm. the president comes from, where a county government would be financing mm -hmm. uh, national functions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't want to talk about uh, the, the, the you know, emergence and the truth and whatever there is about those expend, expenditure mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. But I want to say two things. Mm -hmm. One, it is not uncommon uh, to find expenditures in county governments that are incurred that were not appropriated for. There are some, some expenditures that are incurred uh, within the county government, even without a budget item. That is not surprising. Uh, uh, like what are those things that are financed without a budget? Well, I am saying, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to, like for instance, why there would be a rain item called state house and whatever, and because the explanation was that there was probably no appropriation, and I am saying, I'm putting a caveat that you do not, in the, county, in the way the county, like Kiambu, uh, operates, mm -hmm. you will find a number of expenditure items that were not budgeted for. And what happens, uh, Sam, is that, like for instance, you know that the county 
has been the, the, the executive has been taken to court by the MCAs uh, because of a supplementary budget that was put in. Mm -hmm. And that supplementary budget was necessitated uh, because the original budget was exceeded. Mm -hmm. Votes such as salaries, votes such as uh, service delivery were exceeded as far back as November. And they were exceeded in the expectation that the governor will bring a supplementary budget and latify what has been messed up. Okay? So the fact that the supplementary budget was refused and was turned out by the MCAs mm -hmm. was a clear indication that they knew that there were certain line items or, or votes that have been spent on that had not been budgeted for, mm -hmm. but the, he was waiting for them to ratify a decision that already he had made. And I want to challenge... Did the, you speak uh, no, at that time? No, just hold on. Mm. I want to challenge the mm. county to produce the budget that they had and the supplementary budget uh, that w was, was taken to court and compare the two line items. Why would you exceed certain line items to the extent that mm -hmm. you can probably not pay salary? So this is an example mm -hmm. of a situation where you can spend, you can have an expenditure item which was not appropriated because you are waiting for the assembly to later on ratify a decision that you had made. That is one. Let me come to the second one. Mm -hmm. This issue about these line items, if you look at the budget, if you look at the Auditor General's report, uh, which, is, which is now has become everybody's document, you realize that page 17 and 18, mm -hmm. those items appear as an expenditure item. Okay? For me, it's neither here nor there. Whether they were incurred, whether they were inserted, whether they were what, the governor with his finance ex executive Your had finance time executive, governor. had time can, can, can i can we can we go on so that i can explain to you why i say with his mm -hmm. and instead of with our mm -hmm. you know because that is in public domain mm -hmm. he had the responsibility mm -hmm of going through that. We mm -hmm. have all gone through meetings. We have all gone through sessions such as that. As that. And we know how people prepare. Mm -hmm. And the governor should have been the first person to raise as a point of order to the Senate and say, by the way, I am seeing page 17 and 18 as items that are foreign to my budget. Can you clarify? He didn't because they had no time to look at that budget because there was no, no committee. There was no bu uh, budget committee that, that, that was looking and seeing uh, those things. So the governor did not do his homework. Okay, let, let me cut it short so that you look at uh, what figures you are talking about uh, from the graphics that we have. Um, if we can begin looking at uh, the votes that are supposed, uh, that are claimed or alleged that um, were financed, that is um, stalled projects. The number of projects that have stalled um, are 11. Uh, the status contractor not on site. The amount has already been paid at 341 million shillings. The, the next one is um, that uh, there is Kenya South Sudan Advisory Service that is, has been allocated 58 million shillings. We, we will be questioning why would Campbell be in, interested in that. State House Affairs was allocated 1.14 uh, billion shillings uh, that is uh, squarely a national function what, what is it doing in in Kiambu? then free primary education 793 uh, million and um, the next one is on state corporations advisory service so th that is 598 million shillings squarely national matters and um, uh, you, you again let me ask you a specific question did this happen? Was it allocated in Kiambu from the best of your knowledge? What I'm saying, uh, Sam, and uh, it's good to follow the discussion the way I'm, I'm, I'm praising it, is that these items, if you look at the Auditor General's report, mm -hmm. are reflected as expenditure items in, in page 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. Okay, the argument from the governor was that they were not appropriated for, so money was not provided in the budget mm -hmm. that would have uh, necessitated the expenditure on those line items. If you look at that, uh, uh, that, that auditor's report, page 17 and 18, mm -hmm. those items are listed. So there are, there are two theories. Either money was uh, spent which was not appropriated, and in which case then this is right, or the fact that this was a uh, misposting or mm -hmm. whatever it was or it was inserted, but whatever the case is, mm -hmm. what I'm asking you, you have to take responsibility. If you are a governor who had brought that report and that report had those line items, 
the first thing that you should have done because you have done your homework and it shows the level of your management capability because you'd have consulted mm -hmm. your, your, your CEC, you'd have identified it and raised it as a matter of concern to the Senate before the Senate raised itself. Mm -hmm. So either the money could have been spent, although we are told it was not appropriated for, or it may be a uh, misposting or it was inserted or whatever the case may be, but the responsibility still rise with the governor and his executive. Why not the deputy governor? How did Now, I have told change? you, I have told you time and time again, and if you go to uh, uh, the YouTube, you will see that I say we, we campaigned as a group, as United for Kambu. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the campaigns were over, uh, Sam, uh, I was deliberately removed from the normal management of Kiambu County. You know very well that there are some CECs under the agreement that we had signed uh, with the governor and two other people, including uh, Gakuyo mm -hmm. and uh, Mo John Mogwe. There are some CECs, two CECs that I had proposed that they came in. The CEC for health, the CEC for trade, after two months, these were sacked. They were dismissed summarily, summarily because they were seen to be aligned uh, with me. What the SC, the, C, the, the well, if you go back to the to the history, and it's good that no, no, history no, repeats itself. You can tell us. Yes. Why, why were you said line? What wrong did you do? Well, because he felt that he wanted to run the county as 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 an, an individual. Okay, and he told me, "Sias Aina Deni." Okay. So, and I have been saying this, I have been saying it very categorically, mm -hmm. that uh, the governor has been moving all over the country, talking about how we should respect the debt uh, to the deputy president, and I have no problem with that, and saying that we have to agree and abide with the Jubilee Agreement. And my question has always been, why, do you, why don't you start from home? Because we had an agreement that we had signed, mm -hmm. which was presented to Jubilee, on how we will share positions, on how we will call manage mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, uh, 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 manage the, 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 county, the, the, the county itself. Mm -hmm. But he, he refused. He decided that he want to have the one-man show that you hear a lot of people talk about. And me, I did not have much. I had to withdraw. And if I want you to go into the YouTube and see what I said on 24th of August 2018. When I say I am not part and parcel of that system, I will not be a fool to sit here mm -hmm. and, and argue on a budget that we prepared, mm -hmm. on an audit report that mm -hmm. was presented to us, mm -hmm. and, and, and I didn't uh, raise an issue. Mm -hmm. I think people should see that this was, this was a very deliberate move to make sure that uh, uh, Governor Waititu runs the show individually, mm -hmm. so that we don't see and we don't identify mm -hmm. some of the messes that we are seeing right now. All right, so we'll get back to the management of that, that, uh, that, that county, even as we wait for the ups and over what the governor ha has had to say about this matter. Uh, but when you say that um, the, there are no cabinet meetings, there are no, there's no consultation, so uh, exactly how does Kiambu County government work? Single, single man show. You heard an MCA says two things. One, it's a single man show. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's exactly, unfortunately, uh, we have, uh, you know, some uh, people like the governor was a member of parliament and previously uh, he was a, a councillor. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there, there is a trend to think that you can always run an institution such as a county the way you have managed other positions without realizing that being a governor mm -hmm. of a county is an ex executive authority, mm -hmm. that you are CEO. Mm -hmm. And being a CEO, mm -hmm. you have to depend on institutions, okay, that you give responsibilities, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And I think this has come out very clearly in Kenya, that the management of counties is not just that you are politically correct. Mm -hmm. You have to have some managerial capability and bring in people you can trust. But you can only trust even your employees up to a certain extent. You yourself must be con conversant and have time to go through the rigorous process of running a county. Do you think the governor has those managerial skills? Well, I don't want to speak for him. I think if, if, if probably he did, I don't think we would be seeing the issues that we are seeing But you right supported now. him. You ran on a single ticket. Yes, we did. We did. Uh, not just me, quite a number of us, mm -hmm. uh, because we thought we would want to make Kiabu uh, better. Mm -hmm. I think there were issues before in, in, the, in the previous government. 
in the previous uh, uh, administration that we wanted to correct. Remember, Sam, that I stood in 2013. Okay, so I was not just, uh, you know, brought in as uh, a running mate in 2017. Mm -hmm. I stood at, because I had a vision for Kiambu. And therefore, after the five years, I realized that that vision was not there. And a number of people in Kiambu, mm -hmm. and I want to say this, mm -hmm. The, the kind of things that you are discussing in the papers is a clear manifestation mm -hmm. of how externally Kiambu leadership has been influenced, okay? There were a number of people who could not, you know, they, they kept on disturbing us and saying, Nyoro, if you go your way, and Waitito go your way, so and so will return, will come back, okay? So there were certain uh, forces, and, and, and I have to bring myself for having accepted, and I have already apologized to the people of Kiambu and say, I'm part and parcel of the problem that you are going through. So, DG, when is the last time you attended a cabinet meeting yourself? Um, I can't remember, unfortunately. When is the there, last was, time? there was there was one two weeks ago. Uh, to it was it was deliberately uh, called because it is required that they pass on the budget appropriation to the uh, cabinet office. Mm -hmm. There was one that was done mm -hmm. about two weeks ago. You can find that. Uh, mm -hmm. You can you can. Say, but I was not invited. And so, I, have, I have invitations that I get mm -hmm. from some of the CEC saying, are you aware of this? But I was not invited. So before that two weeks ago meeting, which is the other one that you I don't attended? know because, because I was not invited. I'd, no, no, I'd, I'm saying the last one you, you, you attended um, before that. Um, I think, put it this way, I think in the whole of, in the last nine months, I have appeared on one that lasted for less than 20 minutes. And you go to your office? Sorry? Do you go to your office? Yes, I go to my office. What, and do, you, what do you do? Oh, I do many things. You know, there are several things that you do as deputy governor. Okay? But I, I want to tell you that uh, we already have a project, a food security project in Kiambu, because a lot of people have been asking questions. We have a food security project in Kiambu that is running. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, you know, independent of the county government. Okay? That what is a project what that do you mean? I... Well, I'm explaining to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know I'm like an expert in food security. Yes. Okay? And the first thing that the county should have done is to tap, or if, if they believe that I'm an expert in food security, probably they don't believe. Okay? The first thing that they would have done is that I would have had a, a bigger role in agriculture and agricultural development and food security. The first thing that the governor did was to make sure. The first CEC that we had appointed was an expert from Jomo Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. Somebody I had brought in thinking that we can work very closely because Jomo Kenyatta University has been known for things like tissue culture, banana, and so on, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But he, that was the first CEC to be sacked. It's on record, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. He was sacked because he was aligning himself to me. And it was very clear that I did not have a room to even pursue certain uh, ideas that we had put in in, manif in the manifesto, including the establishment of a pork or bacon factory. Remember, we said that when we were campaigning. And therefore, realizing that uh, I have been broke from that end, mm -hmm. I, I have friends, I have development partners, and we, we started an agriculture uh, project that is called Kiambu County Food Security Project mm -hmm. that is even up to today, it is in operation. It is there in Gatundu, in Deya, in Gidunguri, uh, mm -hmm. and farm, we are seeing results of a good food security management. So okay. there are things that I do. Oh, all right, in but, the but, but you're saying the independent of uh, the county government. Exactly. So the question I want to ask you is, you have, not, you have only attended one meeting over the past nine months. You are not- uh, for, Which lasted for 15 minutes. <laughs> yes, okay. which lasted uh -huh. for 15 minutes. So it's minutes. good call to put it in uh -huh. the right perspective, yeah? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> and, you feel, and you are running a program that is independent of the yes. So why are you still in office? Why am I still in, in office? You know, uh, Sam, you are asking me a question that uh, some of the bloggers, uh, Waititu's bloggers, have been asking right, left, center. Why haven't you resigned like Kepore Kapigadi? Mm -hmm. eh? why, are you in, why are you in office? Mm -hmm. Why, listen, I was in the 2013 campaign running against Kabogo, and I got 280,000 votes. Kabogo got 480, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, votes. Mm -hmm. I subsequently came in in 2017 because of a vision mm -hmm. for Kiambu. Mm -hmm. I was given my mandate as deputy governor mm -hmm. by people of Kiambu. Mm -hmm. I was not given my mandate by Waititu, mm -hmm. neither was I given my mandate by anybody else. Mm -hmm. By resigning, by not being there, is turning against the will and the wish of people of Kiambu. It's giving up. Why would I? I've had a, you know, a, a request for international jobs, and I've said I'm sticking. I'm sticking around. So even those bloggers who are asking me those questions, 
I think my answer is simple. I was given the mandate by Wajiko. And mm -hmm. until Wajiko withdraws the mandate, mm -hmm. I will be there for as long as uh, the period allows. So you'll hang in there whether you involved. Not hanging. Not. I will be there. No, no, use, okay. use the correct term, sir. Or, or, or I'm not hanging. Let, let's listen to what the, the governor of Kiambu, Fernando Wichito, had to say in defense, in his own defense, to what is going on in the country. What I do not know is that the government has been able to do the TV, Jana, and social media. But what is the government? 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 What is the It will backfire for you. How are you? Lakini ukiona kama sasa jana vile kufika tu nimekaa chini wametoa karatasi huko ndani na wameanza kunivamia na karatasi ambaye kila mtu anajua hayo matumizi yote ni ya national government sisi hatuna vote hatuna matumizi tumefanya mambo ya retired presidents mambo ya state house tutajibu kama namna gani si waswahili wanasema biblia inatufundisha kila mtu atabeba nini eh hey, kila mtu atapeleka atabeba msiko yake Uyu baba hao asiwekewe, asiwekewe msalaba ambayo siyo yake. Aulizwe ya kiambu, ili ya national government, sisi tuulizwe. Ama namnagani watu wa kiambu? Sinuna hiyo? Kwa hiyo uyu baba hao usikuwa na wasuasi, hiyo ya South Sudan, former president, sisi tajibu. Kwa hiyo mpambana na hii ya kiambu, uwe ujibu hii ya kiambu wapa. Kaulizwe na hawa nanchi, na ukaulizwe na wengine. So, knowing too well the Kiambu politics, what is the possibility that the governor is being set up? I think one thing that I want to say, Sam, is that I don't want to be drawn into petty politics, personally. Mm -hmm. I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be drawn into politics. And the way this thing is going, mm -hmm. it is entering into succession politics. Mm -hmm. Okay? Succession? I don't... Succession, 2022 20, politics. National or county? National, of mm -hmm. course. County, forget about county politics, 2022. I mean, the deputy president is not running for a county position in Kiambu. It is entering into, uh, it is taking a political dimension. Mm -hmm. And for me, and what I've said very clearly, mm -hmm. is that the Senate has asked specific questions over a particular period of time. Mm -hmm. Why don't we stop politicizing this? We have the special audit, mm -hmm. which as I said, 45 days is a long time. Mm -hmm. We can make it shorter. Why can't we have this audit and empirically produce evidence mm -hmm of the things that we are talking about, including the stored project, including the Kasoba, including the World Bank money, why can't we wait and we empirically produce a report to the Senate and also a report to the people of Kiambu mm -hmm. so that then after that mm -hmm. we can say, ni mambo ya kisiasa, ni. but for now, mm -hmm. when we start politicizing a very, very grave issue mm -hmm. where people are actually jobless, the business in Kiambu is storing. There are five cases in court. We have been taken as Kiambu County mm -hmm. by residents. Yes. Why can't we wait and we do an empirical evidence, we do this, this uh, uh, audit, and we get the results, and we take them back to Senate, and we simplify, uh, simplify this issue. Why are we politicizing it now? All right, and we have seen the the fights within the county assembly, people differing in opinion because of the executive. And you are saying that uh, the ex I mean the county assembly is uh, looks like it's aligned to the executive. As a deputy governor, what do you think needs to be done? Because at the end of the day, the electorate that voted for you will demand results for what they did. First of all, first of all, if I am, if I, if I even don't land in 2022, mm -hmm. even if I don't get votes in 2022 from people of Kiambu, and I have spoken the truth, and I have, I have brought out the issues as they were, mm -hmm. I wouldn't give a damn. Okay? As far as I'm concerned, I have a responsibility now mm -hmm. to say things as they are, mm -hmm or forever shut up, mm -hmm. okay? As far as I'm concerned, I think we have to congratulate the 10 MCAs mm -hmm. who stopped before, before going to the Senate, before talking about the, the stored projects, before talking about Kasoba, there were 10, there are 10 MCAs mm -hmm. who went to court mm -hmm. because they felt the process of approving the uh, supplementary budget was not right. Mm -hmm. That case is in court, we can't talk much about it. The, the, the county government is now even preparing to go to court and withdraw and say they were right, whatever they want to do, okay? But for me, 
the most important thing is that there is a group of people there in the assembly who saw the direction in which this county was going mm -hmm. and they went to court to make it public mm -hmm. and to seek for justice that these, these things have not been going right. So for me, there are people over and above Nyoro and over and above those people from outside who are influencing, wanting to influence the decision. There are people within Kiambu mm -hmm. who, have, who, have, who have stood uh, against this and we want to encourage them we want to support them and we want to support people from all over the county who want to come and view their their their, their issues because this is affecting them i want to give you an example mm -hmm. there is issue about uh, 1.4 billion shillings which is the kenya urban support program which is a world bank project uh, where we are told that that money was supposed to go to a special account mm -hmm. and we ha we have we have some information that that money has been diverted to another account and spend, and this is a World Bank project. Now, if the World Bank comes to audit and they realize the money is not in their account today, Kiambu County is going to be blacklisted. Mm. We are supposed to receive 10 billion over the next five years. If because of one person, it happens that that money has been diverted and we are blacklisted, and the government of Kenya is asked to pay back that money, Kiambu will be blacklisted. It is for developing our municipality. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is the kind of thing that concerns me. It's not about uh, politics 2022 or whatever. It is because Kikuyu, uh, mm -hmm. Kiamba, will not get the infrastructure that it requires, mm -hmm. okay, just mm -hmm. because of a mistake of one person. That is why we should be concerned. Uh, and Deputy Governor, of course you have all your uh, grievances but for the sake of the Kiambu electorate what do you think it would take uh, to resolve the situation that you have to make peace with the governor and for the rest uh, for the remainder of the term over three years to deliver services in uh, the right manner in fact in fact thank you very much Sam for asking me that question because even uh, even before way before uh, the governor appeared uh, before the Senate mm -hmm. I had already suggested a way forward particularly for the case in court because what the case in court has done mm -hmm. was a ruling was made mm -hmm. that they have to revert back to the old budget, mm -hmm. which, as I told you, mm -hmm. uh, the executive had, uh, had overspent in anticipation that the uh, county assembly will approve the supplementary. Mm -hmm. Since the supplementary was not approved, right now they are having difficulties in meeting certain line items, including salaries. People have not been paid salaries even up to today, oh, the, the, the sixth. The sixth of, I'm, I'm talking about the regular employees. Mm -hmm. Cash was for the last six months have not been paid salaries. Mm -hmm. So what I suggested is that this is a very risky situation, uh, Sam, because we are now in uh, May. The ruling, uh, the court decided that the ruling may be done on the 27th of May. Mm -hmm. If the ruling, we wait for the ruling on 27th of May, it means that there is a certain amount of money that we will not uh, uh, get mm -hmm. from the control of budget. Because by 15th of June, we have to return, uh, to make returns mm -hmm. back to Treasury. So I said, for the benefit of Kiambu people, for the benefit of the welfare of Wanjiko in Kiambu, why can't we have an arbitration mm -hmm. where the governor mm -hmm. and the 10 MCAs mm -hmm. sit together and say, for the welfare of Kiambu, let's withdraw this case. Let's go to court and request for a consent to withdraw the case. Right. Once we have withdrawn the case, mm -hmm. let us very quickly prepare another supplementary that is participatory and contributory, mm -hmm. and then we take it to uh, COB yes, so that we get money mm -hmm. and we get this money for Kiambu. I have already said that. So what we need to do is to stop listening. Have you been heard? Well. Not really. What has happened is that the governor is trying to do that, but in a, an indirect way, going to court to say they want to withdraw that case without sitting down with these 10 MPs and saying, let us go to court jointly. So, you know, different ways of... Uh, so, when, when is the last time you met the governor? Um, face to face? Yeah. Or seeing him on, on, on the... Well, I, I just saw him on the TV, uh, television. I think in terms of a meeting to discuss what, I can't remember. I can't remember. Wow. I don't want to say things that I said uh, even last year that I have a number of uh, calls that I have made to him. Mm. He does not respond to them. But that, that to me is neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I know, Deputy Governor, you said that uh, the bloggers have been asking you questions. But one wonders if indeed the environment is so unconducive for you to work, why still hanging there? What, uh, you know, I'm an economist. 
as an economist, I look at the benefit, uh, cost and benefits. Mm -hmm. And I also look at investment. Okay? And some of the best invest do, investments do not give you uh, short-term returns. Okay? So I told you, and I will repeat it some. Why would I go because I've been frustrated by Waititu? Is he the one who gave me the mandate? If today, like you saw in Dika, people demonstrate saying Dika, Kiambu, and whatever, saying Nyoro must go, okay, I'll listen to their voices and I'll go. But why would you, why would you fall into a pit where I resigned, like Porikap resigned? The governor in Nairobi decided not to appoint a governor, okay? A deputy governor. A deputy governor. Or even if he could have appointed, he could have appointed his crony. Why, why do you want to arouse some people to go the direction they want to go? Politics is not just, just about that. Politics is not as predictable as science. Okay? Okay. Let's take a look at the feedback of uh, what you've been saying on Twitter, Citizen TV Kenya, as well as on SMS line uh, 2242. So the hashtag is Deprec. Let's see what your concerns about Kiambu are. Kibu Chimzito says that Nyoro started undermining Governor Itito way back during the campaign period. During interviews, he used to refer to himself as Governor. Yeye I don't know how true that is. Someone go else? No, go ahead. You know who does what time. You know them. All right. Someone else um, is saying on SMS line, this is Steve. Why is the county assembly silent? Did they approve a budget with those line items? Have they formally spoken about it? They have not, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I would have expected the speaker and uh, the majority Just before go on, Anonymous, yeah. you don't leave your name. I'm shocked by Deputy Governor Nero that Waititu should resign with the executive, yet he, as Deputy Governor, should stay put, and yet he is part of the executive. Stop fooling people. This is a political Kieleweke versus Tanga Tanga. Why can't you resign as you keep telling the DP national government? Well, so you are... Prof professionally, uh, I don't answer uh, letters that are written by Anonymous people. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you were so I was telling you that uh, it, 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 is, it is a bit unfortunate that we've not had any uh, response uh, right. from the culture assembly, uh -huh. uh, from the crack, uh, from the from the speaker, mm -hmm. and from the majority leader. Mm -hmm. Because remember, this budget was tabled mm -hmm. in the county assembly, and this this audit was sent to the county assembly. Mm -hmm. So they should have been the first one to say, we are, it is very unfortunate that we are seeing this uh, page 17 and page 18 mm -hmm. uh, uh, being, being, being inserted there. They should have come out very clearly, either to cool the temperatures or to defend or whatever it is. Unfortunately, they haven't, except the 10. Mm -hmm. The 10 have been very, 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 very clear. They know the direction they want to go. So again, and we have had this discussion on the independence of uh, the county assembly mm -hmm. and whether or not when you see where there is no war between the county assembly and the executive mm -hmm. that indeed there is no war or it's is that probably their mouth is full mm -hmm. and when your mouth is full mm -hmm. i understand you don't you talk speak. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so finally if you look at the global picture there has there has been allegations that maybe the auditor general uh, is doing some monkey business with the county's uh, statement so is it a possibility from where you sit I think uh, from what uh, I have heard, uh, there's, there's probably a possibility that uh, either if me or uh, somebody in control of budget, or the, 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 no, there could be some uh, mistakes. I don't know why, because this is not the first term mm. of devolution. Mm. I think it would be important uh, out of this, and maybe much more specifically, and that is why Kambu case should be taken very seriously, mm -hmm. if the audit is done, and it realizes that this is a misnomer, this is a mistake made by Auditor General, uh, then that will form the basis of probably requesting certain changes within, within the way that the, auditor, the, the counties are audited. But it's also true that there has been some complaints mm -hmm. that the audit office has been compromised okay. in some way. So instead of stating certain facts, you know, they get compromised and they state the opposite. When you go to the ground, you find it, it's completely different. All right. So yeah. thank you so much, Governor. Mesh Kimeu says Deputy, that... Deputy Governor. Sorry, Deputy Governor. Yes. <laughs> uh, my bad. Uh, Mesh Kimeu says that it's hypocrisy for Kiambu's James Nyoro to claim he's not part of the county government, yet he won't resign from his position. He should take political responsibility and accountability if he indeed draws his mandate from the electorate. I think you have uh, touched can, on that can I tell in your you response. Can at the nth time where n tends to infinity, yes. I am not resigning. Okay. The Deputy Governor will not resign. Thank yes. you so much for making time for us. Of course, uh, the Kiambu 
drama continues. We hope that the truth can be found as soon as possible. And wish you well. Thank you very much. In your mandate. As Deputy Governor of Kiambu. Deputy Governor of Kiambu. <laughs> Thank you very much. Asante Sana. So we take a short break on the break. On the return, we'll be having Sporty Monday. Uh, Willis Raburu is away, but uh, Mokami Wambora will be telling us of uh, what has been happening over the weekend. You can't miss that conversation back in a moment.